about six more cabs in the street, about on the floor. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is um, an opportunity for our community that Balfour Baby uh, has two years ago was awarded the contract in order to renovate 11 houses on New Air Force Base and then also provide 90 homes for um, off-base housing for enlisted personnel, non-commissioned officers, and officers. And what you have before you in your plans is a planned community that's gated, that's for families, um, and it has the very amenities associated with that type of, of community that's there. It shows a swimming pool, it shows a clubhouse, and various types of things. Now, as far as inter introducing Balfour Baby to you, um, the company is one of the largest construction companies in the world. Um, the parent company is in the United Kingdom, but they have a significant presence in the United States with regard to the development of military housing. Having constructed and completed 53 installations for military in this country. And what they do is they actually will own this project, they will develop this project, they will manage this project um, in a joint partnership with the Air Force. And where it ends up being a joint partnership is that the Air Force, if there's cash flow, will participate in that cash flow at the end. So it's a, it's a win-win, not only to the Air Force, but the developer, but also Lowndes County, because it's about a $20 million project to do the initial phase of 90 homes. They also have an option to uh, acquire phase two of the project, um, and they have a two-year option to do so, that if the, the success is there, that option will be extra. And there will be additional homes that will also be proposed, but that's not part of this only request that would be at a later time it's there. This project will be fully bonded. There will not be, as far as the entire development cost of that project, there will be construction bonds that will be required associated with that. So the issue, the unfortunate issue that took place um, with the prior development would not be Plus, you have the backing of, of a company, which I've been familiar with for a number of years, um, that probably has a credit rating better than most banks in this country today. So they're they're very solid, and they and, and they will do a good job. Now, this project is is actually uh, uh, somewhere between like 15 miles from the Air Force Base. It's also around other residential. Uh, it's in what's called it's designated in the comprehensive plan at suburban area. It is consistent with the comprehensive plan, which is noted to you by um, the planner. And it also meets most of the goals, or I'd say all the goals that are applicable to this project that is associated with the uh, land use plan in Lowndes County, Georgia. Um, one other comment is that it is, it is this group that is going to develop this housing and this project will close and this construction will commence by the end of this year. However, we do need to have the rezoning request to go to the planned development world, which is consistent uh, with what's allowed in these type in the suburban area in this plan. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Are there any questions for the speaker from the commissioners? Uh, Mr. Curry, on, on Balfour Baby, you said they're, they're going to take the land down, they're going to do the construction call. The military people that move in these houses, <coughs> is this a rental basis or is this a purchase basis? No, it's it's rental. That's why there's only one lot that's being, being developed here. You can, you can treat it like multifamily housing, but what, what occurs is that they're with the contractor, there will be restricted covenants on the on the property with regard to the availability of the 
availability of this housing for military personnel. So it, it would not be open to the general public for leasing. There may be circumstances based upon that that it may well do. But what occurs is that when a person comes with a family, they're given a housing allowance. And then that housing allowance would in fact go to the project developer as the rent associated with that. So that's that's where where the revenues would, would come from. And what would the circumstances be to allow the local people to rent those things? Um, Scott, you want to answer that? Hey. At what at what at what occupancy? It would be uh, the the details are still being worked out with the Air Force. It's always it's somewhat different on different <coughs> projects, and uh, they're they're in the process of working that out with the Air Force. But they have a water. Uh, there will be a waterfall included in the agreements with the Air Force that say you first must offer to enlisted personnel at this rank and this rank, and it goes on. There's about a twelve rung waterfall. And the very bottom of the tenant waterfall is the general public only in the uh, in the event that the Air Force agrees and that the occupancy falls below a certain level, which um, I don't think 95% is what we generally see. Uh, the, the, but the full intent is for it to be, that, that's not where Balfour Beatty or anyone wants it to be. It is intended because of all the restrictions that the Air Force places on the use of the homes. It really is for uh, uh, military personnel and the ability to rent outside of that is only if it need, if it's needed to support the project at some point. And if they ever did have to do that, as then they're, which they've only had to do once or twice in some of their other projects, the goal is to not to kick anyone out, but to transition back to entirely military as soon as the finances allow. And the other point uh, that's in the application. Mm -hmm. Yes. If this if this piece of property receives a recommendation moves forward, it's apparent that any local developers and builders are not going to have any win-win situation out of this because there's going to be an, an out-of-town company coming in to do this. So what guarantee do we have that local subs are going to get the benefit of working on, on that site? Well, the project director um, is here this evening. Bill? Yeah. What's the intention to use local subs, local suppliers? Well, we've, we've uh, done 53 projects around 53 sites, and we normally use local contractors from the area, but I'm not with the construction. That's a different division of my company. They would be the ones that would determine that, but I can tell you that the great majority are local contractors and, and a number of our other uh, building project. So, but here again, I'm, I'm not the contractor. I have a question. Is um, phase two part of the 64 acres? Is no, no it's not. How big is that? All right, if you look on the map, mm -hmm. and you see the uh, western boundary of the property, mm -hmm. it phase two goes all the way to the subdivision line that's there. Mr. Tom, there's a ledger pointer there in front of you, sir. You're assuming I know how to do So you're right here? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, and then it will go all the way here. In other words, it's a property line will continue here to there. And the other thing to note is that the actual buffering requirements of the military are much greater than actually you have to have almost an eight foot setback. Uh, before there can be any, any construction. And this particular property right now is heavily wooded. Um, and so uh, the likelihood of any complaints <coughs> are not there. We have been in conversation with the property owners of this subdivision that have asked some questions. Um, and we've answered those questions. And I uh, don't know if they're represented here tonight or not, but they still think, you know, we have reached out to them. I'd like to ask another question. Um, in regards to the plan itself, is there any higher 
the street system, are they all the same? Just, I just want to get a better feel of what is being proposed physically. Yeah, well, you have, you have, a, you have a copy of the site plan that's there, and that's, um, and you can see the street concept that's there, and you can also see where phase one is divided into phase two. That's there. Now, what will occur um, when this is approved is that then the, um, the county and the developer will actually completely finalize the plans as far as how the streets are going to be shaped and everything else is going to be there. Um, but here you can see their curvature, they're not straight streets, and you have two, you have two exits and entrances on Valdale Road, which will be gated. So um, they will have limited access is there associated with that. I don't know, did that answer your question? Well, um, not exactly. Yes, when I look at a lot of plans, eventually this is going to be 120, 130 acre development. And when I look at that, I want to see that there's some sort of hierarchy that we're trying to plan a community. It's not just simply we're trying to maximize the housing units. And I'll tell you what I'm driving at. The plan development districts are rural uh, criteria in there. It does say that. It's, these districts are established to encourage creative and social projects that include compatible interrelated uses and related public facilities unified by development plan and tailored to either urban or rural setting. So the, I don't see the confusion that, that when you do a planned development project, you tend to see more of that different uses proposed. So for example, what would be if you had done if you had done the, the zoning request from R1 to whatever the R category would be to allow that 90 units instead of a PD, go to whatever that <coughs> next R zoning would be to allow? Well, um, okay. First of all, this is not high density. There's a, there's a lot of room space. It also, as far as all of the, the development standards associated with this plan development are district or funding request. Uh, those development standards, in our opinion, are met. We have, we have provided all of the um, consultations with regard to the impervious areas that are there. And I want to bring to your attention that the, there's going to be a, a tremendous amount of green spaces here. Okay. Here's all the community functions that are here. And it's there to really create an environment for families and for social type Five items. Now, if we went to a different type of zoning, like a lot subdivision, which is, this is not intended to be that, you could actually put a lot more houses there than, than what's there. That if you went to the R1 zoning today and said, I'm just going to leave it R1, that could have been built. And I don't know if I'm, am I correct with that? I believe R1 allows for one acre lots. So it would be a little bit less than the It would have been a little bit less, but still, that's the, the density that's, that's there. So is the PD uh, criteria, is the, are you requesting PD to allow you to put the community center there? Or I'm trying well, to that, that's why. part of it. But really, the PD is there so that we don't have to subdivide the lots. Mm -hmm. It's just one lot with, with these homes that are on. That's why that's requested. It could be done in another zone type thing. And so you you know, you, you do have the, I guess the comfort that there's not gonna be turned over at these homes. Um, you've got the comfort that truly what you're looking at is what the military wants and it's you can call it multi family you can call it multi family housing or whatever. It's just in the fact that they're all single cash residences out there. The, the PD is, is you're getting smaller lots, but there has to be something unique about the development. From what I understood, the crooked roads, the green space, and the recreation centers are those add-ons to justify the PD, which I think the TRC has accepted and, and, and has approved, if I'm reading this all correctly. That, that's correct. And, and also the roads will be 
built the county specification. Um, and um, also the consideration for 911 because there will have to be house numbers that will be put on these homes even though they're, they're all in one lot that's there. Um, when, when we looked at this and looked at it, we, we concluded that the PD zoning was the most appropriate use of this. And there is no, there is no requirement, while there could be commercial and retail in this zoning district, there's no requirement that there be any. But it, it, it does contain the other things that you talked about. So. All right, are there any other questions for the uh, speaker? No, we appreciate it.